So I've continued to play with my Model 1 with the Sprinter uh, 1L overclock module in it. And these are the results so far. So at uh, 5.32 megahertz with no wait states, the system becomes unstable. It just doesn't run. At 5.32 megahertz with one wait state, the system actually runs pretty well. By system, I mean the basic keyboard unit. No expansion interface, nothing like that. Just the base level 216K machine. In the video you're about to watch, I'm actually taking the uh, Bartlett Labs MIRE and plugging it in, uh, which is the replacement expansion interface, and actually seeing what kind of speeds I can get out of it. I want to say up front that the MIRE wasn't designed to work with an overclocked TR-80. Uh, we'll get to some speeds where the MIRE doesn't work, it's no surprise. Uh, but there's actually been excellent results looking at the design of the MRE based on this uh, for guard banding, uh, you know, to get reliable performance out of it. I just want to emphasize again, nothing I say in the, in the following video is a diss or a slam against the MIRE. It's a great piece of hardware and well designed. So with that said, let's dive in. So I thought I'd go ahead and take a shot at using the uh, Sprinter 1L or Sprinter 2 overclocking module with the uh, Bartlett Labs MIRE attached to the system. So let's go ahead and power it up, see if we can boot LDOS. Hopefully the uh, camera mount will stay here. So everything's powered up except for the uh, Model 1. I hear the floppy accessing. Oops, it's the 7th, 9th of 17. Now I'm not surprised this actually booted at this point. Uh, system comes up by default on the 1.77 megahertz uh, speed so everything should work just fine at the moment it's essentially an unmodified model one do a directory here and look at the various drives so there's the virtual drive zero the virtual drive one and it's accessing the physical floppy drive two which I believe has no nothing on it and it doesn't. So one of the things that comes with the uh, Sprinter 1 is uh, a utility floppy and on that is out slash command. Uh, that program can be used to send uh, commands out the various ports and the uh, Sprinter 1L works off of course port 254. So sorry I was interrupted there by one of my dogs. Uh, anyhow, the out command that's supplied on the MIRE utility disk lets you send, same as in, in BASIC, I can send a byte to an output port. We know that port 254 controls the speed of the sprinter. Uh, we looked at this in the last video. So I'm just going to jump in and do an out 254. Oops, would help if I actually type 54. A value of 12. 12 will kick us up to 5.32 megahertz with a, a wait state inserted. So, we'll see how the system reacts. Well, that's a good sign right there. Let's see if we can see a difference. Oh, the scrolling rate is definitely quicker. So I do believe we're running at a 5.32 megahertz. Earlier I wrote a little program in BASIC to uh, demonstrate the speed between the two. Uh, standard clock rate in the 5.32 megahertz. Uh, I think I call it speed slash basic. This is similar to the program that we created before uh, in the previous video. Uh, simply outputs 254.0, uh, does some math. Uh, out 254.12, does some math, and just toggles back and forth. And we should be able to see here the speed difference as we did before. So we're at 1.77 megahertz, the default clock rate. And that looks good. And definitely quicker. So we definitely see the speed up. So at this point, I'm confident that the memory on the MIRE is keeping up with the faster clock rate. I guess we could prove this by looking at uh, one of the test programs. Uh, memory test programs, and I don't actually I don't think I have them available here. I'll have to go uh, get, get a couple on disk, and yeah, we'll, we'll look at that shortly. Let's go ahead and save. This is speed one basic. 
to test to test uh, whether we can write or not. Of course, we were at uh, 1.77 megahertz. So let's do one out 25412. We should now be at the faster rate. Again, this really should work just fine. When the uh, floppy is being accessed, the sprinter drops back down to 1.77 megahertz. So the, the clock rate is the normal clock rate. So from a quick and dirty look, it appears to me that we're basically functional at the faster clock rate. Kick it back up to 3.5 or 5.32. Uh, slight syntax difference. Command line utility doesn't use a comma. Uh, so at 5.32 megahertz with the one weight state. Again, I believe the screen scrolling is quicker here. Uh, be interesting to uh, run a memory test. Uh, so I took the secure digital card out of the MIRE, hopped over to my main computer, and put some memory diagnostic utilities on it. We're in DSK. We can see the utilities here uh, on the card. I want to go ahead and copy those onto an actual floppy image. We can see that floppy one, uh, neither one is right protected. So I'm trying to remember now whether it's a git or a put. I believe it's a put that we do to transfer them from the SD card to an actual floppy. So put copy a file onto TRC80 drive. So if we do a put, and we'll just take diag dot command and put it to diag command and hopefully I can do this with a floppy number I don't remember for sure and if we quit and do a dir of drive one I've now uh, transferred diag slash command onto that that floppy image so if we go back to DSK And look at the images on there. There's these mem diags. Let's go ahead and do a put uh, mem diag two dot command to mem diag two command on floppy one. Bad terrorist eighty file name. What did I do wrong? So I've copied a few memory test utilities onto uh, the virtual drive one. Let's kick the system up to high speed. Oh, so hard not to type the comma there. We should now be in high speed. I copied a few utilities except on drive one. Uh, Let's go ahead and run memu1. Type A for RAM, O for ROM, video. O for ROM. So let's see, this should be the level two version 1.3 basic. ROM A checksum should be, so your ROM A checksum is B078, which doesn't match, DA45. That's because this test, I don't, I think, didn't know about the uh, version 1.3 ROM. The big test here is for RAM. Let's do a, let's see, quick test or push pop test, complete test. Let's do a complete test. And this is testing uh, all the way through the, the memory on the MIRE. And it should be testing it at a 5.32 megahertz. We have a feel for the speed there. I don't think I can break out of this. But I can, should be able to reset and get the system to boot. I'm gonna have to cycle the power.
So I'm going to leave it at the normal speed here and rerun that same test just to see if it's significantly slower. It should be about three times slower. So that was memu1. And I want to do RAM. Yeah, it's definitely, oh, we want to do complete. Yeah, that's definitely slower. Go ahead and boot again. Oops. Out to fifty four twelve, which should get us up to high speed. Ma'am, you too. And obviously, I don't remember the name of the program that I ran just thirty seconds ago. M E M U. One. Hmm. So we want to test RAM and do complete. Definitely quicker. So I'm going to go ahead and just let this sit and bake for a while on the high-speed memory test. And we'll come back and look at it shortly. So I've been playing with various overclocking speeds uh, against the MIRE just to see what it's uh, actually capable of supporting. I emailed with Peter Bartlett a little bit about this. And as he said, the MIRE wasn't designed to work with a system that was overclocked. And he actually expressed uh, uh, that you know, he was surprised it would actually work, you know, work with overclock at all, uh, though obviously it does. Uh, I'm currently overclocked at 3.55 megahertz with a weight state, which is essentially double the normal speed. And, and so far the MIRE memory has just worked absolutely fine. If I push this up to 5.32 megahertz, even with a weight state, uh, we get memory failures, so I've obviously over, obviously have it running faster than the MRE memory can keep up with. Uh, again, no surprise. Uh, definitely pushing the MRE harder than it was designed to be pushed. I'm going to go ahead and play with the DSK utility a bit. I know it doesn't work at the full 5.32 megahertz with or without a wait state. Don't remember if I can get out of the memory test here or not. Well, we'll just restart if I can get it to boot. Okay, we'll cycle the power. And again, I'm just playing here. I'm, I'm not guaranteeing that you, you'd have similar results. Or that this is even a, a good way to abuse the MIRE. But it does give me an interesting test bed for the overclocking module. So I'm going to kick the system up to 3.55 megahertz with the weight state. Uh, out to 54. 13. 25413 and I expect core functionality to be here we're accessing the floppy so the clock's back at 1.77 megahertz everything looks normal and we know the DSK utility had issues being overclocked at 5.32, and it has issues here as well. There's no, there's no surprise that the utility fails. Uh, the utility, as I've said before, is bridging the SD card and the uh, Model 1 disk subsystem. So let's try 2.66 megahertz with the weight state. And that is uh, 14. Well, interesting. So at 2.44 megahertz, or 2.66 megahertz, with the weight state, the DSK utility at least starts up. We see the contents of the card. That's nice. Let's do a put. Uh, Oh, I don't know which one. Uh, mem T S H E 
one dot command to mem s1 on drive one and I'll go ahead and do the same thing command to mem s1 Let's command on drive 2, drive 2 being an actual physical floppy and it's accessing the floppy so again I want to be really clear here, I am in no way uh, saying anything negative about the MIRE or its hardware. It works really, really well. Uh, my mucking around using overclocking to play with it is simply that. I'm pushing it outside of its design parameters. So there's no surprise that in you know combinations of speed and weight states, it doesn't operate. That's, that's just how hardware is in the real world. Um, Pretty interesting. Uh, I'm going to kick the system back up to 5.32. So if I do an out 254, 12, 12 should give me 5.32 megahertz with uh, one weight state. And if I do mem s1 off the floppy. I expect this to fail and it did. Uh, system just can't keep up with that kind of clock speed but as I just said that's no surprise. Anyhow I'm gonna move on to seeing if I can understand why I can't run the main board itself at 5.32 megahertz with uh, no weight states. So we'll look, take a look at that in a future video. Bye.